Tears of the Kingdom hasn't been out long, and yet already several massive game-breaking glitches have been discovered. These glitches range from insanely simple to completely game-breaking, with glitches such as duplication and even noclip. In this video, I'm going to be going through the best newly discovered glitches and explaining what they are and of course how to perform them in your own game. If you guys like this content, make sure you're subscribed as there will definitely be many more glitches discovered and you don't want to miss them. Just a heads up, the latest patch for Tears of the Kingdom just got released as I was just finishing up this video, and a few glitches such as the duplication ones and Zuggle don't work on the latest patch, so if you do want to do these glitches, it does have to be on 1.11 or earlier. The first glitch I wanted to cover is one of my personal favourites, which is auto build sliding, and it's a pretty fun one. This glitch allows you to travel super fast while riding on top of a constructed vehicle. For the sake of simplicity, it's easier to just use a single plank of wood as they are super abundant, but maybe in the future some crazier things will be discovered. To actually perform this glitch, all you need is auto build and some building materials. Head over to one of these Hudson construction things and get a plank and another item and glue them together. This is just so we have an auto build option in our history. Now open up the auto build menu and select the thing you just made. Now this part is the only tricky part as the timing is kind of weird, but basically all you're doing is closing the menu by pressing B and then immediately pressing Y to open up the auto build menu again. If you press Y too late, you'll see that nothing will happen, and if you press it too early, you can tell by the purple mist still remaining. If you get the timing right, you should have the menu open, but there also shouldn't be a purple circle around the building. Now, once you're at this stage, just press A to select to build it, and if everything was done right, you should see this odd construction animation, and now the platform will be following Link around. To actually ride on it, you can just push it up against an object, and Link should be able to step onto it. Now you can travel insanely fast pretty much wherever you want to travel. If you would rather gain vertical speed, there is another glitch that also uses a plank of wood and is a little trickier and a bit more inconsistent to perform, but if done right can have plenty of uses. This glitch is called Recall Launch or Recall Jump, and requires a spear and two planks to perform through using Recall. This will launch Link straight up into the air with varying amounts of speed and can even launch Link up to the sky barrier if done perfectly. To set this up, first fuse a wooden plank to the spear so when thrown it will spin. Now, throw the spear and use recoil on it to freeze it mid-air. While it's frozen in the air, quickly use Ultra Hand to attach it to a nearby plank. Stand on top of the plank and recall the spear. If done right, you will see the plank start to rotate and Link will then get launched up into the sky. This glitch is pretty cool once you actually get it, but it's quite tricky and took me quite a while to get a good one, so I don't really see this glitch getting used too often. The next glitches I wanted to talk about are the several duplication glitches. The first one has already been outdated within a few days of it being discovered, this was the first duplication glitch discovered, where you would use Fuse on a bow to duplicate a single item at a time. This glitch was super fast, but had the only downside of duplicating a singular item. Now we have a brand new glitch that allows us to duplicate 5 items at a time and is much faster and easier, and will probably be the easiest duplication glitch we will ever see. All you need to do is be in an animation where you can't hold items in your hand, which is as easy as being in the air. You can do this by just paragliding or even shield jumping. Once in the air, open up your menu and hold the item you want to duplicate. Now, just press the B and the Y button at the same time to simultaneously sort and close the menu. Now, on the ground there will be 5 new items that you can pick up and add to your account. This is by far the quickest and easiest way to duplicate items, and allows you to get absurd amounts of super rare materials in no time at all. When it comes to duplicating weapons, there is a different setup, but it still allows us to make exact copies of either weapons, bows or shields, including anything fused to it and any special attribute. To perform this glitch, first hold out the weapon you want duplicated and place down a manual save. Now open up the menu and drop the weapon you're holding. Now equip another weapon and quickly close and open the menu. Drop the weapon you're holding and reload the manual save. There should now be a weapon at Link's feet which you can pick up and add to your inventory. Now you have two of that weapon. The last duplication glitch works with zone eye capsules and is quite similar to the previously mentioned material duplication glitch, as it uses the same idea as pressing both B and Y buttons simultaneously. To set this one up though, you need to find a wall or some place where you can place any Zonai device and it shows this message. Now, step back a few steps and place down 10 devices. It should place down most but not all of them and still show the message. This means you have done the first part right. Now, open up the menu again and select another 10 devices, but this time press both Y and B at the same time to both sort and close the menu. You'll see that no more items can be placed down, but 10 items will be added to the totals in your menu. This glitch can be used to get a bunch of specific Zonai capsules instead of having to use the gacha machines and you can use all these capsules to build some sort of monstrosity. If you guys have made it this far into the video, make sure to subscribe as the channel's nearing in on 1k subs and it would be super cool if we're able to reach that goal. 
There is now a glitch that allows us to remain in the air indefinitely while gaining height and forward distance. This glitch isn't the easiest to perform, but once you get a rhythm to it, it's super useful in shrines or other areas where there is no way of gaining height or jumping over gaps. To start, just jump and then attack jump, and as soon as you do the second jump, hold L to open up the rune menu. From here, as soon as you let go of L, open up the shield quick select menu by pressing the left on the d-pad. Switch your shield and when you let go, enter bullet time by pressing ZL. Now in bullet time, quickly press Y to jump attack, then immediately press L and repeat the same steps again. You can link as many of these together as you want, and it depends how quickly you can get these inputs to how fast you can gain height. This is a super heavy input related glitch, so expect to have to put some time in before you can do this one consistently. Similar to the infinite jumping glitch, a way to fall damage cancel has been discovered and uses similar techniques to the previously mentioned glitch. The fall damage cancel makes it that fall damage is obsolete, but this fall damage cancel is much harder to perform than Breath of the Wild's one, as it requires several precise inputs over the simple one in Breath of the Wild. To perform the fall damage cancel, enter the skydive animation and a little bit off the ground, cancel it and enter bullet time. While in bullet time, hold L and press Y to attack midair. If Link looks like this while the menu's open, you've done it correctly. The best timing I find is to press and hold the L button slightly earlier than attacking, as the menu opening is a tiny bit of startup. Now at this point, just like in the infinite jump glitch, let go and immediately open up the shield menu by pressing left on the d-pad. Switch your shield, and when you let go of the d-pad, you're going to have to press R, and then immediately cancel the skydive. You might take a little bit of fall damage depending on what height you perform this, but it's still super cool and allows you to explore without needing the paraglider. In Breath of the Wild, the most well-known glitch was easily whistle sprinting, as it was so simple and made traveling in general just a little bit faster. In Tears of the Kingdom, they removed this glitch and actually punished trying to do it by making your stamina decrease faster than just holding the button. Now we have several alternatives that aren't as good or easy as whistle sprinting, but are still better than just running normally. The several discovered alternatives are bow sprinting, throw sprinting, crouch sprinting, and even a mixture of the two such as crouch throw sprinting. The easiest one to do by far is bow sprinting, but all the glitches work in similar ways with varying amounts of speed. To perform the bow sprint, all you need to do is tap B and then ZR to sprint and then cancel the sprint by pulling out the bow. This isn't as fast as whistle sprinting, but you can clearly see that it's faster than walking and doesn't use stamina, so these glitches will get used quite a lot in speedruns and casual playthroughs. This next glitch allows you to get the Master Sword super early before you have even left the Great Sky Island. Starting off, you're going to need to head to this shrine on the Great Sky Island. Now, enter the shrine and make sure that you have an auto save as you enter the shrine. We're also going to put down a manual save as a precaution so there is no danger of losing your save. As the next part, we are now going to exit to the main menu and start a new game. Don't worry about losing your previous saves, as we have two saves just in case and I'm doing it on my main account because there's no danger at all. Now starting up this new game, just skip and run through the start part until you get to the larger room with the keys in it. Follow the path down to around this point here near the end of the long hallway and place down a manual save. Now load up the autosave made in the shrine. From here, break open the wall, grab this boulder and place it in the large room here. Now attach this smaller rock to about here on the boulder. Move the two rocks over to this wall and line it up with the line on the wall. Once the boulder is lined up like this, step on top of the small rock and open up the menu. Now I'd recommend using a larger weapon for this part as it just makes it a little more consistent. So you're going to want to drop your weapon you're holding and equip another weapon. Now close and open the menu quickly. Once done, load up the save that was made in the hallway under Hyrule Castle. If this part was done right, you'll see a weapon somewhere along the stairs, so pick it up and now you have access to the weapons menu. In this menu, we can now see the Master Sword. Even though it's not labelled as such, it still has the same properties and also has infinite durability. Now, the reason why this weapon appears here is quite advanced, but basically the coordinates inside the shrine are similar to the coordinates in the starting section below Hyrule Castle. So, by dropping a weapon inside the shrine, when the game is reloaded, it then appears on the stairs in the other save. Going back to the rest of the glitch, we are now going to place down a save just in case this part doesn't work so we don't have to do the whole thing again. After that, we're going to head to the certain section on the stairs. A good indicator of finding it is past this broken arch and near this dirt patch. This large stairs here, we're going to stand just before it and open up the menu. Drop the master sword and equip the other weapon. Now quickly close and open the menu. Now load the autosave inside the shrine again. From here, head all the way to where the rock was placed, and if you did it right, there should be a master sword sitting in the water. Congrats, you now have an infinite durability master sword.
The last glitch I'm going to be covering is another funny one, but still quite useful in certain ways. It's known as the Zuggle glitch and can cause so many funny effects such as T-posing Link and no clipping through the ground, as well as just creating really cool weapons. This glitch uses a lot of the previously mentioned overloading of weapons and weapon duplication parts to create abomination of weapons that allow you to wield all the elements and just completely lag out the game. To perform this glitch, head over to a wall, face away from it and make sure you're around one link away from the wall. Now hold out the weapon that you want to turn into a super weapon and open your menu. Here drop 6 shields, it can also be weapons but shields are more consistent. Drop the weapon you're holding and select another weapon. Now close and open the menu. If the weapon comes back to your inventory, you aren't far enough away from the wall, so line yourself up and try again. If done right, drop the weapon you're holding and equip another weapon and close and open your menu. You should now see the weapons you drop come back into your inventory, which means the glitch is done. Now you can repeat this as many times as you want to make some super funny looking weapons. That's all the glitches I found super interesting or worth talking about so far, but I can guarantee you that these won't be all the glitches in the game. So make sure you're subscribed so that when more come out you don't miss them. If you enjoyed these glitches you might want to learn about some of the cool glitches in Breath of the Wild so check out this video on screen right now.